Hi, I'd like to go over what I consider a couple of major pharmacogenomic breakthroughs, one in the cancer space and the other in uh, cardiovascular. The uh, recent data on KRAS uh, and how mutated KRAS uh, renders uh, individuals non-responsive to cetuximab, erbitux, or uh, Vectabix, uh, these EGFR inhibitors, uh, is really uh, quite important. And in fact, we have a really fascinating uh, struggle because the American Society of Clinical Oncology has recommended screening for KRAS mutations, but the FDA uh, in its panel and review of this topic has suggested that, in fact, uh, prospective data are needed. There was a very important paper in the October uh, 2008 New England Journal which documented that the high percentage of individuals with KRAS mutations, almost 40 percent, have a, a null response, that is no effect uh, from the um, Herbitux, which costs about $50,000 uh, uh, for a full uh, therapy. Um, on the other hand, those with uh, a wild type KRAS have a, a very um, robust response to uh, Herbitux. Now, that particular scenario is important because if those individuals not only have to uh, have a high expense, unnecessary exposure to a drug, but also uh, lose several months in the process to find out they're not responsive when in fact they could have metastasis of uh, their cancer. This drug is predominantly used for colon cancer, but has also uh, had uh, uh, use in other uh, types of cancer uh, as well. Now the other big uh, breakthrough which was highlighted interestingly uh, this and uh, uh, the KRAS uh, story in the New York Times December 29th front page article uh, during the holidays many of you may have missed but uh, Andrew uh, Pollack uh, had a table in that article of all the recent important pharmacogenomic uh, 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 discoveries. And this one was uh, uh, three articles, two in the New England Journal, one in Lancet uh, in late December, about the CYP, cytochrome 2C19, uh, which is involved in changing clopidogrel, Plavix, the second largest prescription drug, into its active metabolite. There's a loss of functional allele, which is quite common uh, in CYP uh, 2C19. Over 30% of those of European ancestry 40% of uh, 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 Asian ancestry and over 50% of African ancestry have a loss of functional allele, which basically renders uh, them poorly responsive uh, to conventional dosing of clopidogrel. This is quite important because these three studies collectively all showed a threefold increase of death, heart attack, or stroke during follow-up, with not all these events occurring uh, straight away, but over uh, more extended months to years of follow-up as well. So this is a major liability, uh, that is the interaction of a key cytokine in the metabolic, metabolic pathway of uh, clopidogrel. So therefore, uh, what we have to do is to uh, consider uh, the uh, uh, whole uh, genotyping being routine. And in fact, the FDA is uh, taking that uh, in advisory uh, right at this point uh, to see whether or not uh, genotyping uh, would be appropriate. This is especially interesting because Prasagrel, uh, a drug which does not have the same liability that is uh, relying on uh, the cytochrome 2C, 2C19 uh, and the problem with getting high enough concentrations of the active metabolite. So that is an alternative that is emerging and possibly high doses of clopidogrel could override this concern. So with these two breakthroughs uh, one related to the EGFR uh, and KRAS story, the other related to clopidogrel and the P2Y12 receptor uh, drugs. We have some really big advances finally in pharmacogenomics. I'd be very interested to see what your views are of these, but certainly both of them have tested the reflexes of the medical community and the regulatory body as to how to fit this in to daily practice. And so it'll be interesting to see how these discoveries are uh, channeled and accepted over the times ahead. Thanks very much for your attention.